Hey boys and girls, uh, welcome back to Monroe Live. I'm here with Corey. Um, and we're gonna talk a little bit today about our trip to Vietnam. Um, we were invited to come down to uh, Vietnam by VinFast, uh, along with about a hundred other, what do they call them, influencers and... Yeah. Uh, v, uh, there, there was business they, people, there yeah. was media, traditional yeah. media. Investors. Investors, first customers. Yeah. So it was a wide array of different people yeah. that VinFast wanted to have you know, out to Vietnam. Yeah, so the factory was kind of impressive, <laughs> kind of. Nine million square feet. Uh, there's no plant like that, except for the, uh, except for the uh, Tesla um, uh, Gigafactory. Uh, that, that's about the only one that's, that's of that yeah. size. And these buildings were large, and they were separate, but separated by just small, you know, alleys or driveways. There was a yeah. paint shop, there was a body shop, there was a stamping shop, there was a battery module, a battery pack battery shop. Battery pack shop. And then there was a general... Kit, there was, uh, there was also a cushion room, like where they make their own seats. They have, um, they, they have a stick build, um, instrument panel that they do right on the assembly line, yeah. which I've never seen So we before. have a ton of B-roll <clears throat> from this. So let's first talk about the batteries. So we saw they're using 2170 batteries. Yeah. They look like Samsung cells, just like right. we saw in the Rivian. We were able to see the size of their modules. They're using black plastic modules. They said they were cooling from the sides right. through the, yeah. the snake pattern, similar to right. Tesla. Tesla. The enclosures that we saw were primarily aluminum. Cast and uh, there was cast and node. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, cast and extruded. We weren't able to get any footage of the modules of the packs themselves. They only let us film at the little entryway. Yeah. But but what I did get a chance to do is get a chance to look closely at what the um, the retainer for these uh, for the different cells were, and that's that's a clever idea that they've got. What they've done is somehow they've taken the extruded aluminum and they've overmolded the, uh, the, um, the extruded aluminum, so the stuff with the microcells in it, and then overmolded it in some plastic. Maybe it's, a, uh, maybe it's um, like one of those cool polymers where it's also, uh, um, it's also a conductive, or at least for heating and cooling conductive, uh, kind of product and and what they did was they don't glue them in like uh, like Tesla or bolt them down like uh, like some of the other um, some of the other companies have done uh, they just push them in it's just a uh, it's a press fit a, a light press but still a press fit to push in the batteries and I thought that was brilliant because really and truly they can move really quickly um, when they were uh, they have some, uh, uh, some of the automation that kind of brings the, the uh, battery cells into, into a position where you can bring it over the top of the battery pack and then drop them in. Well, they don't drop. They kind of like uh, push them down maybe, I don't know, maybe half the length of the 2170. They, they do use a 2170. I don't know if you mentioned that, yeah. but a 2170 cell. And then they just have another unit that comes and pushes them all the rest of the way down. So, like, I mean, what a great idea. That, 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 that was kind of innovative. And when I was talking to the uh, vice president of engineering there, I've forgotten his name, a German fellow. But anyway, uh, when I was talking to him, he said, well, you know, we've got uh, very few people coming in here. Um, we, uh, for the most part, apparently what they were getting was newspaper kind of people or analysts or th people who really didn't understand the technology, or let me rephrase that, didn't understand the machinery and whatnot. Mm -hmm. And he said that, uh, well, you guys obviously understand um, and uh, we've got patents on it. He didn't say you can't talk about it, so here we are. Mm -hmm. But I, I that was one of the things that I, I truly did like about the, uh, the yeah. factory. So we got to walk through the battery uh, the battery factory. We left that Just due dancing. to some timing. We drove around in a circle for a while. I yeah. don't want to go there. Then we ended up going through the stamping shop. Yeah. And that, 
I I saw a lot of dies, but not a lot of action right there. They only had yeah. one line running. Right. Well, it wasn't even running really. Yeah. So in a in a wide aisle tour, similar to what you'd get normally if you've got a bunch of uh, people who've never been to a factory before. I mean, when I got off the little bus that brought us from one place to the next, I was expecting to feel vibrations on my feet because when they say a stamping plant, usually there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of noise and there's um, uh, these things are, are huge. They 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 crank out um, big giant steel parts like door uh, door parts and uh, hoods and and deck lids and whatnot. And I was expecting that. And I felt nothing. We walked inside and it's not noisy, not noisy at all. And I'm looking around at presses, huge presses, and the best you can buy. Schuler is my favorite press on the planet, and they had nothing but Schuler. their automation was all. Um, ABB or uh, you name the uh, the high quality kind of automation system, and it was there. So I was uh, I was really impressed with uh, with what they had, but they also know that these people uh, might get nervous or upset, and so what they were doing was they had dies in that were stamping little panels flat that looked panels. like yeah flat panels maybe they were for the. Cover. battery pack cover or maybe they maybe they fit somehow into the deck the 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 pan of the uh, uh, of the uh, skateboard or something I'm not sure but there was not there was no this was a press that could stamp out pretty much anything and basically all it was doing was uh, a little bending here and there and and some trimming so you could see immediately you look at the die I mean it's teeny in comparison to what the platen looks like. So yeah, so the factory was set up for 38 jobs per hour, and it kind of reminded me of Giga Texas, where they were getting ready to start to produce, but they really quite weren't quite there yet. That's what I what I gathered. The, yeah. All the machinery was in place, uh, the lighting, the line side kitting material. We did see the vehicle in various stages throughout. I saw like the cradles with electric drive modules. I saw cradles with the ice powertrain because they used to make yeah, ice powertrain right, yeah. vehicles there. Mm -hmm. We got a test drive yeah. um, early. We weren't supposed to get a test drive until later in the day. The day, or, no, the next day. The, the next Thursday, day. Yeah. Um, but they made an exception for Sandy and we went and we drove it through a course. Sandy ran over a bunch of cones. You went too fast. By the time we got back, like usual, they said, "Don't go that fast next time. We're yeah. watching you." Um, the gate, uh, the the track marshal was unhappy. So uh, that wasn't the first time that I made a, a track marshal unhappy. I do have footage of you driving. Yeah. So yeah. I was uh, tire screeching. Yeah, the tire. Well, I wanted to find out where it would break away when we went around the curves, and they said you were supposed to go like thirty clicks or something per Th hour 30 kilometers per yeah. hour yeah anyway we went through considerably faster than like 70 because yeah something like that but it but anyways the car i thought the car was pretty stable it, it has a a bm well it's a bmw kind Tour, of yeah. it's a old fashioned but anyway uh, it has a very bmw ish feel to it if you're into um, if you're into that type of drive um, getting into uh, the uh, the VinFast, uh, we were on the VF um, eight, eight um, which is the sedan, and um, and I would guess that you'd have no no trouble uh, becoming accustomed. Actually, one of the things that I did like uh, about that car was the huge number of options. It's just incredible um, how many different apps and. Um, Oh, and the user interface. The that's user really interface. Yeah, it's just stunning, and it gave me the feeling more of a cell phone than it did uh, yeah. a car instrument panel. Yeah, I, I was very. They, they were really proud of that, and they like to highlight. They like to highlight the fact that it did a lot of things that like a Tesla doesn't. So but nobody they, does. They talk I mean, about the car wash mode. Yeah, there's a button you press where it turns your windshield wipers off. Put your mirrors in, puts it in neutral, all the things yeah. that I don't think a Tesla has a car wash. I don't yet. even know how to put the Tesla into neutral. Really? 
I know how to put it in reverse. I know how to put it in a park and drive. Where's neutral? Oh, yeah. There isn't any. So I, I always wondered, you know, if I have to tow this thing, how, how do you do it? Oh, yeah, you don't, but, you don't tow it yeah, with so, the wheels down. Yeah. You heat the motors up. Yeah. So anyhow, um, uh, their product, I don't know how they, they must disengage maybe the idler gear or something. I don't know what they do, but in essence, they can, um, uh, they have a neutral, which is something I've never heard of before. Well, it probably just lets it roll at a slow speed. That, that's, mm. They're not going to well, disengage the gear. There's no gearbox. That would be a huge Well, there case. is a gearbox. Well, there's no, like... They, I don't know how they clutch it. I don't know what they do. But anyways, they do it. So that's all that counts. Um, not to mention all the other... I mean, they've got so many different options. It's incredible. I think you're going to have to have an encyclopedia. Well, we, we have to, a separate video. It's like 20 or 30 minutes long where you sit in the car with... Hugh. One of, yeah, with Hugh, and he goes through everything, yeah. and it's really detailed, and I think we're working on that. It may come out before this, probably after, I don't know, but mm. look for that video. We yeah. don't need to go over that. In yeah, detail. I think, uh, I think uh, a lot of people will be interested in that. I'm, I'm pretty sure that um, anybody who's got uh, an electric vehicle should uh, pay close attention to what, what they've got, because they've got more options than I've ever seen uh, I've ever even heard of some of the stuff I most of it I can't remember it because you hear so much it yeah. it just you, you get overloaded all yeah. right so that's so, about it Sandy Anything yeah else? no I think we're good so anyways thanks again for watching uh, Monroe Live um, you may or may not know that uh, that our uh, reports are coming out here quite quickly uh, for those people who buy those sorts of things um, our reports on the Model Y comparisons between the 2022 and the 2020, uh, the Model S, um, the battery pack, uh, the battery packs, all these things are coming out. We're making progress on the yeah. Rivian, yeah. as well as the, the, Lightning. F the F-150 Lightning. So yeah. in October, we will be able to field inquiries on the F-150 Lightning. We're able to talk about it now. Everybody yeah. knows we have one. So a lot of reports, email us at sales at leandesign.com and yeah. you'll get all the information you ever wanted. Great. All okay. Right. Well, thanks again, boys and girls, and we will bring you as much stuff as we possibly can as soon as we can. Thank you.